Good evening. Um, I'm Peter French. I live in Warminster. I've been an artist for oh, 40 years now. Uh, pretty much all of that professional. I started off life as a draftsman. Uh, you might be able to see it in my work, but uh, I am used to doing sort of straightish lines. Um, I do like windows and under eaves and goodness knows what else. Um, I'll be quite honest though, um, I, went, I was a, a cartographic I'm drawing maps with the military. Now it's, you get brainwashed in there as a very, very fine um, tickety boo work. Um, every line's got to be exactly straight, exactly right angle, etc. Um, it's honestly taken me years to get out of that hat. It really has. Um, the, the, the picture down the bottom there, which uh, is fairly sort of free and uh, easy, um, that's, uh, uh, that's difficult to do. Anyway, get away from that. Um, yes, I was living in Norfolk. Before that, in 2011, I was living in London. Um, I used to exhibit uh, down at Bayswater Road on the Romans for the oh, best part of 15 years. <coughs> that was uh, very good there. It did dry up a bit, but uh, lots of tourists to sell artwork to, etc. Lots of pictures in London and wherever, you know, so uh, smashing stuff. Um, I've had exhibitions um, in Royal Watercolour Society. Oh, sorry, I haven't had an exhibition myself, but uh, I've put work into the Royal Watercolour Society, uh, the Mail Galleries, and two or three other places. So, you know, it's. Uh, Fairly good uh, record I've got. Um, and I hope I can do it justice. Right, tonight I'm doing two pictures. Now you might think that's a bit strange, but the thing is with um, any sort of watercolour, um, you've got to let some of it dry first. Um, if I'm leaving it to dry, um, it means, uh, well, I, I would have to just sit here and talk to you. <laughs> and I prefer to get on with the painting. So whilst one is drying, I'll get on with the other one, and then it, they'll, it, I'll be swapping over um, through, through the evening. Right, this uh, is Oxford Circus. It's uh, sorry, Piccadilly Circus. We've got uh, Eros in the middle. I know it's not Eros, but anyway. Um, and it's to try and put all the detail in there would be a nightmare. Um, so many windows, etc., etc. So uh, this sort of treatment doesn't uh, quite well. Um, you're getting a good idea. It's a good su a suggestion of what the artwork is. Um, and uh, again, getting away from the real, <coughs> it's probably much better. Um, than uh, actually doing it. Right, the first thing I'm going to be doing is putting the yellow background up. I'll put the sky in, but I'll start off with that uh, bit of yellow in the background. I'll have to wait for that to dry, so I'm just using a, a pale cadmium here. So uh, this is literally going to be just a, a swash of paint down here. Uh, another thing, you don't have to worry too much about where the paint goes because uh, it's going to get covered up with uh, other acrylic. So, anyway, we don't want too much there. Um, I don't want to put the blue on whilst that's wet, um, otherwise it will go a horrible green colour. We don't want that in the background. Uh, so this one's going out to dry now. Yeah. Would you like a hair dryer just in case? Sorry? Would you like a hair dryer just in case? No. No, it's alright. Now no, this, this weather should be... Yeah, uh, it's fine. It should dry fairly fast. Um, Right, this is a picture of Froome, just over the border in Somerset. Um, 
Oh, I forgot to tell you, that paper down there is old, it's rough. Uh, I use that pretty much all the time, uh, especially for watercolours. Good stuff. Uh, again, this is Archie's rough. I have put some gesso over the top. A couple of uh, coats of gesso. Um, so if you're using canvas or anything, it's going to be pretty much the same as that. Um, the reason I put gesso on this one is because there's going to be a, a fair bit of uh, brushwork on there and I don't want the, this, this paint to soak in too much. Uh, because that, being a sort of dark uh, or semi-light evening, mustn't have too much contrast on that one. Is that thin uh, gesso or sorry? Is that diluted gesso or Oh yeah, well yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. Um, that's straight out the can and washed on one way and then dried it and washed down the other way, so uh, it should be <coughs> okay. Um, I've already put the sky on this one. So uh, next thing I'm doing, I'm gonna put some bit the start of the back, put some buildings uh, way off in the distance there. Yeah. For that I'm gonna use ultramarine. Uh, and a tiny touch of uh, Alison Crim. Um, and the thing about this picture is um, you've got the gradations of blue working back, or well, same as the other one actually, and uh, don't make this background too light, will you? Uh, sorry, too heavy. Um, otherwise, uh, it, will, it will bring it forward too much. So, just going to mix this paint up. I'm uh, just going to follow the uh, the pencil drawing in here. Um, the thing is, you can always put the uh, any lights or any colours you do want uh, can go in afterwards. Uh, you can leave a few little holes, etc., uh, for lights and what have you. So, uh, now, it doesn't matter if this drips down here a bit, so in fact, we want some. Oh, it's a, it's a bit on the wet side as well, uh, damp even, so we want some uh, reflections coming down there. Yeah. Um, good bit of kit for your fingers for pointing with. Yeah, I was running down too much. Right, as we come up to the nearer buildings, we want to a bit more uh, darker blue. I'm going to add a bit of uh, cobalt blue in there as well. Um, and I'll also be putting some Payne's grey in with the blue. I'm going to put a bit of um, flow medium in that because we do need to make sure that that 
doesn't get too much in the way of uh, and you don't want the paint to, uh, sorry the brush marks in there too much so I'm going to put a bit of uh, as I say um, you want it, everyone saying that used it that's reasonably good stuff the only other um, medium I use is uh, Retarder. Um, you can get so many bits and pieces now for watercolours, acrylics and oils, um, lotions and potions. Um, but uh, that's up to you if you want to spend a fortune for them. But, uh, however, as I say, this does. Now you'll see this makes the line work, the brushes, brush work. Smoother. What is the make of that one? Right there. Yeah. That, that's Winsor and Newton. Winsor and Newton, what is it's just um Flow Flow Improver. Sorry, it's flow improver. Flow improver, Winsor and Newton. Yeah. Um, it does there's different companies called it slightly different things, but uh, as I say it does cut out your brush marks. Yeah. If you don't want them. Another coat there. So, well, you can see the brush marks on that one. So, uh, so as I say, let's go over there, give it a second coat later on. Work is shut. So, I think we're going to have to have a second coat on all of this lot tonight because uh, that is showing the brush. Man. Might be a good idea also if you want to use um, masking tape or masking fluid. I would mean to do that uh, to leave the lights, the windows, etc.
to show any sort of clouds, it's a uh, very nondescript sky. Um, it's this that's important, not the sky. So we're just gonna get a... Just gonna mix up a watery blue colour. And that's one way. Get a big brush. Once you come down here, obviously the sky is going to get lighter, so just keep adding some water to it. Like so. And obviously don't worry about any drips coming down here, they're all, uh, they're all part of the mix. Um, you'll notice that the lines I put on here, the perspective lines, are literally just that. There's virtually nothing to do with uh, any detail. Uh, when we start filling these buildings in, uh, we're going to need to know where the lines of perspective are. So that, uh, well, they've got to be fairly accurate. If you get those wrong, um, it's going to make the the building look. Uh, well, the buildings look quite bad. So, uh, right, that's about it. Right, anyway, so if I'm sort of uh, swapping over too fast, I want to let that one sit there whilst we go back to this one. There's going to be more, uh, yeah. There's going to be more paints grey than blue. So again, we're darkening all the time we go on.
Uh, that's going to have to wait till it dries and then we can put a top coat on there. That will get rid of those brush marks entirely. So, um, this picture, or this style, I first saw a picture by Good Seago. That was done in oils of a place in Yarmouth. Um, and uh, that's where I got this idea from. So, if I'm going to do this in oils, by all means. Right, let's get back to London. There we go. Have we all used, or anyone used a roller before? The pack. Uh, this, I must admit, when I first came across this, I thought, oh, no, that's a bit weird. But believe me, uh, you can get some good effect with it, as you'll see. Uh, all this here is pretty much done with rollers, uh, large or small. And uh, it's very quick as well. Uh, mix your planes up. Uh, these are very cheap as well. And um, I'm pretty sure most are at this. And so on as well. So it's just a question of putting up the roller. Okay, you've got to watch your tones on this. You mustn't get too much dark back here, otherwise um, it's just a question of doing this look. Uh, okay, uh, certainly if, if you've got a fairly large um, hogshead brush, use that sideways and that will give you much the same result. So, uh,
Uh, old credit cards. Um, it was handy for putting paint on, um, or uh, in this case, what we're doing is scraping the paint out like so, and you get a line. Make sure you follow the lines of perspective, and uh, you'll be all right. Uh, I say I'm not worried about the actual um, where the actual windows are, etc. That would take weeks to do all that. Lot. So, uh, and this is the reason I'm doing this. I like this work is because it is very fast. Have you just seen both pictures? No. Um, that one is, the one I threw me is, this one is, this is just ordinary paper. Um, the reason I put GSO on that one is because we're going to need to put a couple of, well, a couple of coats on. Right. Um, if the paint starts soaking into the paper, um, that's going to make it a bit more uneven. So, as I say, this one I'm not really too worried about. Um, it won't, doesn't matter if it's uh, a bit off there or there. So, uh, Okay, this is ultramarine and uh, Payne's grey, so we'll go up to this end and start putting this on. And it's still not even, come on. You can use the side of that as well to put the uh, lines on. Are you using that flow in that? No. no. Flow in is not here. Uh, not for this one. Uh, We've got some light coming down here, so try and leave this section here fairly <coughs> light. Don't put too much in there. Does uh, try and remember where your uh, lines of perspective are. Come on. 
Um, something else you'll notice with this, um, if you've got something uh, in the foreground or anything large, try not to put it right in the centre, okay, because uh, that will split your picture up. So offset that a bit, go from there. Okay, and that's quick and easy to put windows and etc. Right, get back to the other one there. Once we've got one coat on here and dry, the second one does go on much more smoothly. As you see, I'm not more one for using much colour. Um, just not. I suppose being a, basically a watercolour artist, um, it's difficult getting colour anyway, because uh, and it's only once you get into something like this or oils that. Uh, but um, as you can see, you can get some lovely subtle effects with uh, just one, two, or three colours. Anybody here scared of drawing straight lines or has problems with it? Um, being a draftsman, obviously what well, we used to do was straight edges, etc. But um, the problem with doing very straight lines when you're doing architecture, it uh, you lose the character of the buildings. Now, you can imagine the buildings in this village here done with straight lines. I doubt if there's a straight line anywhere around here. Um, that would uh, look pretty awful. Um, there's one good way of doing a relatively straight line. Uh, get a bit of paper, put two points on it, A and B, and with your pencil or pen, etc., 
Uh, put that on point A and look at point B. Don't look at the pencil or the line or whatever, just look at point B and go to it like that. And it uh, does help to uh, get a relatively straight line. As I say, you don't want to do it too much, it's too straight. Yeah, one other um, medium I do use is glazing liquids. Um, if you need, or if you want to put on a nice flow at the end, so you, nice bit of mist or something, again, this will make sure that uh, you get nice fine brush flow. Stick a bit of white or something in with that, and you can get a sort of nice misty sheen with that. So. Uh, it might take three or four coats again, but uh, that's uh, well worth it. Is that how you've got the effect on the one there as the monument? Uh, no. No, it's not. Uh, that's just a question of not putting too much paint down the bottom. Yeah. Uh, I know up in Norfolk, for instance, you've got a lot of very low mist over the countryside there and uh, that was marvellous for that. But I suppose yes, yeah, certainly cities and towns nowadays. Yes, they've got lots of mist and yeah. you know, so, uh, Did you want to stop for a break? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, good idea. I'll get to it.
point there. This area here, that's a bit too light, so I'm going to go back over there. Um, darken up a bit, that's uh, receding too much into the distance. Uh, it's always a good idea to take five minutes Go away from your pictures and come back and have a look, see what uh, should or shouldn't be done. To this one. Uh, we can keep adding bits of paint to this um, and pretend there's bits of detail in here. It seems as though you're only using the edges of that roller, Peter. Uh, so, yeah, if using the at an angle, you can use the corner to get some some lines down, like so, you see. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's... So you, you want even flow, you just press harder. Yeah, and flatten it out. So, uh, yeah, that's another thing, you see. You can use various pressures on it to get uh, more on or less on or what, and whatever. Uh, By the way, this, I came across this a photograph initially um, of it, rather than all the neon lights and all the advertising, the, the photograph was before they were all put up, so you can see all the lovely windows and architecture. So, uh, Again, you can pretty much make this up as you go along. So. Right, with this, what we should do is put it up here. Lines under like so. Again, um, stick to the, uh, the lines of perspective and uh, 
Too dry to do anything with now, so we'll have to get some white on there. Next time you're in London, have a look at uh, the architecture around because uh, I'm afraid most people are too busy trying to dodge the traffic or anything else like that. But uh, London certainly has got some nice architecture in it. Right, anyway, what I'm doing there is just um, putting the odd bits of details filling the bag. Um, We've got the lamp post to go in here. Uh, a few bits of details down the bottom for shots, but that can go in with a white at the end. Um, anyway, you get the idea. It's uh, relatively quick and easy. You can make a good looking picture um, quite fast using these rollers. So, uh, as I say, next thing we'll do, we'll put some shot fronts in and start on the uh, actual monument there. Right. All this is going to get, I'm just going to start with some Payne's Grey. Uh, not going to put any uh, other sort of colours in with this. Um, it's got to be in your face right up front here. So. Uh,
Any highlights we can put in afterwards with some white. I must admit that is one of the beauties of acrylic. You can, uh, unlike watercolour, you can't really go over it. Duh. Start putting some uh, your person or something like that. Um, also, you don't often see a London trick without a bus. Uh, by all means, stick buses and cars in if you want. But, uh, let's, uh, what we must do is get the pavements each side. Little,
doing this is going to need a few little highlights putting in when it's dry. Um, get some white or some yellow over there. Right, Keep the perspective and put odd things here, and it doesn't really matter. Um, as I said before, trying to put every bit of detail in there would be uh, taking weeks. Yet again, because it's uh, what we don't want are the brush marks. Uh.
Anyway, the idea here is to get the paint that, uh, as brush mark free as possible. So, uh, obviously, with a misty, damp night like that, you can't see much detail or much contrast. So, uh, question of going over these uh, faces here, and uh, you've got to go over them three or four times. Titanium white. Uh, we're going to start filling in a few bits of uh, details in here. So uh, I don't want this sort of thing stark white. It's going to uh, be really a bit too much in your face. So uh, we follow that. Put us scratching it, we put the detail in with uh, some white or where's that cut again on it? Things like um, lights and shop fronts, obviously you can start then putting some, well you can use the brightest colours you want in. Uh, this is cadmium red deep, cadmium yellow. So, uh,
Oh, quick car. Right, basically it. Um, we could fill around for hours with that and put little bits of details on here, there. Um, try not to do too much though. Um, as you probably all know, it's uh, a difficulty to know when to stop. Yeah, make sure you, if it looks right, it is right, and then leave it. So, uh, right, um, I'm not going to do anything more to that one. Um, you've seen. Uh, the basics of it and uh, whatever so uh, I hope you can find those rollers as well as I say if you look online I'm pretty sure Jackson's do them and also the SIA so uh, that's great Pete thank you very very much for that that's uh, yeah quite inspirational I think Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, the last thing I was, uh, obviously the lights in this one are going to go in and various lamp posts and what's in it, same with that one. So uh, that's about, uh, that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions at all? Yeah. <laughs> Say again. <laughs> <laughs> Flexions in the lamp post. Well, yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Really? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, uh, and another problem is, is a good idea obviously to get the front. Doing it from here, you difficult sort of uh, doing your straight lines and this, that and the other. So, uh, anyway, I hope you've all got the idea and uh, see how I work a bit in acrylics. Anyway, as I say, most of my work is watercolour. Uh, if you want to go on your print, say 35 pounds. So, uh, 